In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be taking a quick look at the digestive system. Now, I know that this is a very detailed topic. However, in this preliminary video, we're just going to be taking a look at what the various parts of the digestive system are called, so its anatomy, and with an overview of what each of these parts does within the human body. So hopefully you won't find this too taxing and fairly similar to what you studied at GCSE and IGCSE. So first of all, let's make a note of what digestion actually is. Remember, it's the breakdown of large insoluble food molecules. Into small soluble ones. And so taking an example of a large and soluble food molecule, that could be protein. And then once digestion has finished processing that protein, what do you end up with? Well, you end up with amino acids. So that's all we're doing with digestion. We're ingesting food and then we're processing it into a form that can be absorbed into the blood. So ingestion is taking food into the mouth. It's no more than that. Now there are two types of digestion, mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Crucially, mechanical is the physical breakdown of food. So you're taking large chunks of food and you're making them into smaller pieces of the same food. They have not been changed chemically, their structure remains unchanged. The whole reason we carry out mechanical digestion is to increase the surface area of the food. The second type of digestion is chemical digestion. Really, we're looking at enzymes here, and these really do change the structure of our food. So if we were to take a large molecule such as starch, and we were to release amylase, which is an enzyme onto it, you produce much smaller subunits known as maltose. And here we haven't just chopped up the starch, indeed we've changed into a completely different molecule. So starting with the mouth then, we've taken food into our mouth, and we know here that mechanical digestion is going to take place via the teeth because they chew and that helps to break up our food. And then in terms of chemical digestion within the mouth, the salivary glands release the enzyme amylase, which causes the conversion of starch into maltose. So if you were to take a piece of bread into your mouth and chew it for long enough, you'd notice it would start to taste a bit sugary and that's due to this sugar maltose being made. And that starts the digestion process within the mouth. So once that food has been chewed, it now gets swallowed and it passes down the esophagus, also known as the food pipe. And remember, peristalsis occurs here, and this is the contraction of circular and longitudinal muscles. And what's its purpose? Well, it's really to help the food move through the digestive system, and we call the food a bolus of food. It just means a ball of food. So it moves that food forwards with these waves of contraction of both the circular and longitudinal muscles. Then we enter the stomach. There's several things to notice about the stomach. First of all, an enzyme known as endopeptidase. Check your spec to see if they prefer you to call it protease. This takes long chains of proteins known as polypeptides and converts them into much shorter peptides. So taking our longer chains and converting them into much shorter chains. We also have a very low pH, which is provided by the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. And what this does is it kills pathogens such as bacteria help stop us getting sick all the time. Remember that the wall of the stomach also has some muscle layers which contract, helping to break down that food further. We're gonna take a quick look at the liver now. This produces bile, and bile has a really important role. First of all, it emulsifies fats or lipids. And what that means is it takes the large fat droplet and breaks it up into smaller fat droplets, similar to the role of the teeth really, when they chewed, and that increases the surface area, which is really important. Next up, bile neutralizes the stomach acid, the hydrochloric acid, therefore providing the alkaline neutral conditions that enzymes in the small intestine require, but more on that later. Notice that bile emulsifies lipids and it neutralizes the stomach acid. The liver makes the bile. This green object here, called the gallbladder, stores the bile, and then it's released into the small intestine. Now the pancreas is this organ here, which we can see hiding behind the stomach. This secretes a variety of enzymes, including amylase, lipase, endopeptidase, and to some extent, the small intestine also does that. 
We've looked at what endopeptidase and amylase does previously in this video. We'll just take lipase. Quick reminder, it takes lipids and converts them into fatty acids and glycerol. A very important enzyme. It doesn't work that well on the fats, which is why that bile was so important to help increase the surface area of those lipid droplets so that lipase would have an easier job of it. Now the small intestine, we've said it secretes enzymes, but it has another role, which is absorption. And we'll look more closely at how it does that in another video. But it has villi and microvilli, which increase the surface area for absorption. Like I said, I'll explain this much further in a, another video. And notice that absorption is of digested food products. Whereas if we were to look at the large intestine now here, we're looking at the absorption of water. And then last but not least, the rectum stores feces, which is the scientific word for poo, whereas the anus is where feces are ingested, i.e. removed. So that's the sphincter, the hole where the feces pass out of.